So we continue in the 15th letter, this letter, very famous letter, speaking about Mipsari Echselaka, that from uh, knowing how the soul interplays with our, with our being, we can understand how God interplays and interacts with creation. So, we're going to get now hands on to this and to understanding what this means. So there's a lot of metaphors over here. So hold on to the metaphors. Um, so we can appreciate the makeup of our soul. And as we said, our, the makeup of our soul is something that God breathed into us and is a part of Him. And because we can understand that part in us, we will be able to understand that part of Him. I mean, well, that part of Him within creation. Okay, so there are 10 divine attributes and there's 10 powers of the soul. There's seven emotional, and that's what we're going to go into today is the emotive attributes as opposed to the intellectual. Um, so the first thing is chesed. The right hand is chesed. Chesed means uh, indiscriminate giving. Giving without a measure, without any measure. Um, I'm going to give some of my own understanding of this. That's like when you're uh, not, not what the alternative is, is in Tanya, but just to give us a little uh, yeah, appreciation. When you're a host to guests, so you give indiscriminately. You don't, um, you know, if you put out um, for breakfast a bunch of pancakes and uh, waffles and, uh, you know, other maybe uh, fattening things, you don't say you're a guest who maybe needs to lose some weight. Uh, that's not for you. <laughs> you know, you got to lose some weight. Right? Not, not, you don't do that as a host to your guests. What do you do? You give indiscriminately, right? That's chesed. Gvura, on the other hand. The story of the Huh? The story of the yeah. yeah. Yeah, you should tell that. <laughs> the um, gvura is the left hand. It's the weaker hand. Gvura means strength. It means to hold back. It means to hold back maybe not to give it or to give a limited amount, you get what you deserve. In other words, you worked, uh, you worked for the, for the eight hours, you're going to get paid for the eight hours. You only, you goofed off for uh, three hours. You only worked five. So you only get paid for five. That is Gvura. Or maybe, you know, sometimes you hold back completely like a mother is going to not give an ice cream to the child before dinner. That is an act not of chesed, of kindness, right? Or at least not openly kind, kindness. It is, it can be motivated by kindness, but it is a an expression of gvura, withholding, of holding back. And then we have the combination of the two, and that is kaltiferes, which is beautiful, which is a, because it's a combination, just like a, a garment that has colors, many colors to it that blend together. So here there is compassion, is a blending of giving and judgment. There's a judgment, because you don't give just to anybody, you give to so the, the one that is pitied, the one that needs. You're not making it, you're making a, uh, a distinction here, as opposed to the host is not making a distinction. You just, you give the, um, um, the compassion is you're making a distinction. You're, you're giving to the one that is down and out, the one that doesn't have. So there is a judgment made. There is a, um, you know, there is a distinction made. It is not like kindness that is indiscriminate, right? It's my uh, birthday and, you know, drinks are on me. And even to the guy that maybe you generally wouldn't care for, you still give because you, it's about your act of giving. But here, there is discrimination. There's uh, someone to be pitied. So that means there's a judgment made that someone that doesn't have. And uh, based on that, nonetheless, you still give. Not holding back that maybe, well, maybe they don't deserve it. Maybe they didn't do the work. So for example, um, someone maybe that 
was supposed to work eight hours, but something came up and they didn't do the full eight hours. Something came up and at home there was a difficulty and they uh, spent three hours there. So by what you made up, you only have to pay him for the five hours, but out of compassion, out of pity for the situation that the person's in, that they're in great need and uh, there was a difficulty that they had at home, out of compassion you give. So those are the three, um, uh, uh, three basic emotions that are very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very um, passion. There's a lot of passion there. There's a lot of emo. They're very emo. They're the emotions of emotions. A lot of feeling in those. But now, and the author gives a metaphor, uh, or, or uses this as to, to give us an understanding. When a teacher wants to teach a student, or a parent wants to teach a, a child something, right? So the fact that you have strong emotions, whether they be compassion, they would be a, a kindness that's motivated by love, or it be, or or, or, or be a strictness in uh, in in Gvura. The the question then becomes: How do you bring it down to the child or to the student that they should appreciate it? that they should incorporate it, that it should be something that talks to them. And it's not, you know, sometimes you have an idea, you're passionate about something, but what's the problem when you're passionate about something? It's you and your passion. Does that mean that that passion will translate to the recipient that you are trying to inspire, to teach? Not necessarily. That's why it's not enough, those three attributes of Chesed, Gvura, and Tiferes. That's why we need now what's called Netzach and Hoid are the, the two that we're going to talk about now. And Netzach and Hoid translates as victory, triumph, endurance, is Netzach, and Hoid is acknowledgement, is humility. And they are the right leg and the left leg. This is how you ground something. You ground something with your feet, not with your hands. Your hands get very, uh, very uh, excited. You know, people talk with their hands. Why? Because the passion that they have and the feeling that they have is expressed by, you know, the movement of the hands. But if you want to bring it down to the student, to your child, in a way that it'll be palatable for them, you need to ground it. How do you ground it? Netzach and Hoyt, those two. So, meaning you need to deliberate now, how am I going to bring this idea that I'm excited about and bring it down to a level that it will be um, something that the recipient will be excited about, your, your child, your, your student will be excited about and they will absorb it. So the first thing is, actually that idea, bring it down. Bring it down from your level, right? Because <coughs> remember, you're the teacher. You're the teacher, so that means you're on a, a higher level of understanding than the one who you're teaching in this, right? So it is, um, you're, 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 pa you're um, so you need to bring it down. You need to bring it down, and this is the idea of um, the Alter Rebbe is metaphorically of in the body, because what, what do we have right now? We have the right hand is Chesed, the left hand is Gvura. I forgot to mention that the that compassion is the torso of the body, and now we have the right leg is Netzach, and the left leg is Hod. So now. This concept, this idea of grounding the the concept to teach to the recipient, your your, your child, your your student. Um, so he gives a the metaphor of actually um, kidneys and 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 the testicles, a male organ. 
testicles. What is that? So, well, kidneys um, take things and filter out. So you need to filter here to filter out the things that will be maybe too too high-minded, too too abstract, too too difficult to absorb for the for the student. Likewise, the idea of testicles, and this is metaphorically, is um, the idea of, a, as uh, the alternative explains elsewhere, is the idea of that sperm is created from an abstract mind activity that now expresses itself in a concrete sperm. Without going into this idea that actually we've, we've dealt with in the past in chapter two of, uh, of the first part of Tanya, <clears throat> but the, it's a metaphor. The metaphor is concretize it, bring it down, ground it. Furthermore, um, in in bringing it down, gives another metaphor of grinding it into small bite-sized pieces like a millstone that you grind the grain in order that now it could be an edible food. So the same thing, we have food for thought. You wanna teach something, you wanna express something, you need to bring it down in bite-sized pieces. If you leave it, if it's not bite-sized, if it's too much, if you're giving over too much information, then it's not going to be absorbed by the student. Those are, that's Netzach and Hoyt, both the right and left leg, both together. Now specifically Netzach, Netzach means victory, it means an endurance, right? Well, who's, who, who wins the battle? Someone who endures. What does that mean to endure? It means that you uh, overcome obstacles. Triumph is, you have obstacles before you and you overcome them. So in teaching, giving over something to a student, you have obstacles within yourself, right? Of perhaps how you're thinking about that student, right? Oh, maybe they don't have the capacity, so therefore, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're not, yeah, you know, so you have to overcome that. Or it might be, maybe there's other things outside of you that the student is displaying a behavior that's not allowing you to overcome, or, or rather you need to overcome, uh, in order to, in, to triumph in bringing down the idea. That is the, the idea of Netzach. Now, in this uh, particular letter, there's a part of the letter that's missing to explain hoid. Hoid is the left leg. That's off the right leg to endure, to overcome, to triumph, the stronger leg, right? To be triumphant in uh, the obstacles. But then there's the left leg. The left leg is a weaker one, a weaker one. So he doesn't explain over here, but just briefly to give over, the idea is, um, To acknowledge, to acknowledge, it means to acknowledge, it means to um, to recognize what the challenges are, what the difficulties are of the recipient, of the student. So that, therefore you can tailor make the teachings, the thought, the idea that you want to convey in a way that the student will be able to absorb. So in Netzach is to overcome obstacles, it's about you. Hoyt is, is about the recipient and truly understanding what their challenges are, where their difficulties are, to recognize that and to, um, with humility, to be able now to deliver the teachings. And then, finally, the last thing that in today's class, that the Altered Rebbe explains, is Yesoid. 
Yesoid is translated as foundation. This is foundational, of course. And uh, interesting in the, um, in the makeup of the human body, so we have right, right hand, right leg, uh, right hand, left hand, right leg, left leg, we have the torso, so Yesoid, that which is foundational, is the uh, is a reproductive organ. We use that as a metaphor before, but again, no, no, that was just a specific metaphor. But here, so you say it's found. The, and what is the point of the reproductive organ? Is to connect. It's a connection between, of course, husband and wife, right? And so you say it means foundation to connect so what does that mean in the metaphor over here that we're using that the uh, parent wants to teach a child that the, 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 the teacher to teach a student so this means as follows when you're conveying information and let's say you're very aware of the uh, the challenges that the student has you're also overcoming your your stuff in order that you could bring it down and make it concrete for the student. Now, you could speak the idea, right? And for example, let's say the student or the your child is behind you when you're teaching the idea, maybe to yourself or maybe to others, and they're just hearing it. And yet you're bringing it down in a way that is talking to them. It, 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 they're absorbing, they're getting it, but they're not connected. Why? Because when a teacher is looking the student in the eye and is teaching them eye to eye, face to face, and, and in that connection, there is the desire of the teacher to give the, the 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 student valuable teaching and there is a desire by the student to be a recipient of those teachings what happens the teacher wants to teach more to give more clarity right and the student absorbs it so much better I you know we all get it that when you know me, I, I do a little, do somewhat a lot of teaching, and when I'm, uh, you know, if it's well here, it's on Facebook, so I don't see any faces. But if it's on Zoom, and I don't see any faces, or if I see faces, but they're kind of in a different world, right? That doesn't create a strong desire for me to to connect. When you just see a black box, or you see just the name of a person, or you see, um, or you see, or you do see a face, but you see that they're kind of preoccupied with something else, and not a judgment about it. It's just a fact that the teacher doesn't teach the same as that when there is an eagerness shown by the student that they want to learn, they want to absorb. That's a, a fact. And likewise, the other way around. If the teacher is kind of not making a connection to the student, and it's kind of just, uh, you know, speaking from the top of their head, ideas that they have, but they don't make eye contact with the student, right? They don't show the desire that they have to connect to the student. Then, of course, the student is, is hearing the information, and it could be very concrete, down-to-earth, bite-sized ideas, and so on and so forth, tailor-made for the student. But without that connection, it doesn't absorb the same way. It's not absorbed the same way. Because you need the bond. You need the connection. And that's why the metaphor is the, the reproductive organ, because that is purpose, is to connect. And that, folks, are the six, at least, emotional attributes that we have in our soul. Um, the intellectual, we will come to. We'll come to also Malchus we didn't deal with. One second. Yeah, no, it's not, not today's class.
come to that. And, uh, okay. Any questions? Any comments? Yeah, don't worry. My son's driving. I'm not even a backseat driver. Because <laughs> I'm in the front seat. Thank you, John. I don't see any questions. By the way, I mentioned... Uh, previously that it's a good idea to ask the questions at the end of the class so because often the fetus uh, lose some of